Great. And I think it's now one o'clock in Central Europe, uh, midday, 12 o'clock here where I am uh, in the United Kingdom. So therefore, I'd like to officially say hello, say welcome, uh, bienvenue, welcome, bienvenute, bienvenidos, and welcome to Alte's first ever international digital symposium. I'm so pleased that you're here with me. Uh, with we, the organizing team, the Alte trustees and Alte members are really pleased that you are here today uh, in this very innovative and unique environment that we are in. Uh, my name is Graham Seed. I'm the Secretariat Manager of Alte, the Association of Language Testers in Europe. And as I said, I'd like to welcome you all here today on behalf of the trustees and the members. Um, I hope you know a little bit about Alte already. Uh, if you don't, please do take a look at our website. Follow us on our social media, on Facebook and on Twitter. And I encourage you to do that specifically for the duration of this digital symposium. Do tweet and put, post on social media using the hashtag uh, Alte uh, Digital 2021. So um, I'm sure you will find out much more about Alte over the course of the next three days. For those of you who don't know us so well, we're committed to many things. But the three things that you see on screen at the moment are three of maybe our key ideas. We're very much focused on quality in language assessment. Um, and that is far reaching, uh, but we do specifically have a quality management system uh, with our members language tests being awarded a Q mark once they have passed uh, a audit and you can find out more about that quality management system on our website. We're very much interested in having positive impact on the language testing and the language assessment community and that means making connections between Alte and language testing organizations, language testing practitioners, language testing uh, researchers, those involved in language education more widely, uh, and the policy makers too, those at the European, international and national levels. And of course, uh, that all leads into our focus on multilingualism. Now, yes, my home language is English and I'm talking to you today in English. But Alte is a collection of members from across Europe, across the world and we assess in different languages, we communicate in different languages, we communicate across different languages using our plurilingual repertoires. And I'd encourage you at this event to speak to other people, to network and to use whatever language or languages you feel comfortable in to talk to other people. Now, the theme of our digital symposium over these three days is safeguarding the future of multilingual assessment in the COVID world. We had hoped to have our seventh international conference in Madrid last year. Then we had hoped to postpone it to this time this year. Unfortunately, that's not possible. But we take the theme of our international conference and we shape it into a new light, looking at the reality of the, the world in which we live in today, which obviously, as we all know, has been transformed quite dramatically over the last year. We want to consider language assessment and language education more broadly in light of the realities that we now face, both now and in the future. And so that's why we decided to have this conference, this symposium here at this time. When we were thinking about designing and shaping this conference, we had some key ideas in mind that you can see on screen now. Most of all, we really wanted to retain the feeling of community that Alte members and non-members alike share together, both during conference 
conferences and outside of our regular conferences. And so that's one reason why we decided to have this very innovative, very interesting, very unique platform to meet on. And we hope that you make the most of that in these three days. So please do interact, interact in your sessions, interact in the break times, go up to the rooftop terrace and enjoy a virtual drink and network with people. Um, use the innovative features, use the, the likes and, and the smileys, talk to each other and engage in this platform. We don't want you to suffer from this so-called Zoom fatigue. We really want you to make the most of it. And of course, we want you to make the most of the content of the sessions as well, obviously. We hope that these sessions are relevant and interesting to you in the context where you are. So please get involved and carry on that conversation over the course of this week and into the future as well. If you need help, then please have a look at the program, have a look at the user guide that you should hopefully have. Come to the welcome booth um, or try and find uh, myself or Sabina or Mariangela, who are the Alte hosts, um, or do get in touch with the technicians from our platform, that's All Seated Expo. They'll be happy to help you with any technical problems you have. And in the sessions, there are content moderators who will introduce and close each session and introduce the Q&A sessions as well. I'll be the moderator for this stage. Uh, we hope that you've had some time to explore the environment and know where rooms one and two are and the rooftop terrace as well. We'd also encourage you to have a look at the exhibitors, our sponsors in this exhibition hall, do interact with them, do have a look at the videos and the resources that they're sharing, and have a look at Alte's resources as well. We have our booth in the center of the hall. We also have our resources a wall, which you can download some of these documents and more. That takes you to links to our website. I particularly want to flag up uh, and launch, in fact, our new publication, The Collated Papers of Alte's Seventh International Conference. Unfortunately, we had many presenters who weren't able to present in person in Madrid, and therefore many of them have written up their presentations as papers, and we've included that in this new publication. You can find that on the Alte booth, the Alte resources wall, and also in our website as well. Finally, in my, the final part of my opening, I want to pay tribute to two uh, special people who have been with Alte over the course of the last 30 years, I think, almost since Alte was founded uh, 30 years ago. I'm going to embarrass them slightly now by putting up a picture of them in 1994. But in doing so, I really want to pay uh, tribute and thank our colleagues at the Goethe Institute um, who have been so supportive of Alte over the last 30 years. And in particular, Michaela Perman Balmer and Sibylla Bolton. And they are here today, I think. Michaela has been the chair of the standing committee. That's the committee that looks after our auditing system and the Q marks uh, for the last 12 years. And she's recently stepped down. She will very much continue to be part of the Alte family. She's not going anywhere, but we do want to thank her for her contribution, particularly over the last 12 years, but also in the last almost 30 years. And also, we have to say an enormous thank you to Sibylla Bolton, who really has journeyed with us uh, in Alte for a long, long time. Uh, she has recently retired from being retired. Uh, she has done so much to Alte. She's now an individual expert member with Alte, uh, and she has been an Alte auditor and before that, the representative from Goethe Institute. So we just want to thank Goethe Institute and these two wonderful people in particular. And I'd like to offer up a, a sort of virtual round of applause to them for all their help. 
Anyway, it's now 10 past one. Uh, I finished on time, which is wonderful. And therefore, I'd like to uh, declare this uh, Alte Digital Symposium open. And I'm going to invite the Alte Secretary General, Nick Saville, up on screen uh, in order to give uh, his welcome to you and then to take control for the first plenary session of our symposium. So welcome, have a great time. Nick, it's over to you. Thank you, Graham, uh, for getting us started. So uh, fingers crossed, here goes. So hello, everyone, and welcome from me. Um, I'd like to get my presentation up. Here it goes. Uh, that's the first thing to get working. So welcome to Alte's first digital symposium. I hope you have, I hope you're already enjoying this uh, virtual reality environment. In keeping with Alte's tradition, our focus this year is still on multilingualism and assessment, but this time with some added dimensions brought about by the COVID world we find ourselves in. And before starting, I'd just like to take a few moments to reflect on this, and in particular, on the great losses experienced by so many, the loved ones and livelihoods that have gone forever. And I think we should remember that uh, we're still in the middle of this continuing crisis. It's evolving around the world as we speak. And so our thoughts are with those who are still being affected in, in many ways, often tragic ways. So just a pause for reflection on that. I hope, however, that this event will provide some causes for optimism and perhaps some uh, emerging green shoots for a better future. Our theme, as usual, is contextualized within Alte's traditional mission uh, or three-part motto, setting standards, sustaining diversity, and maximizing positive impact, as uh, Graham has already um, indicated. The innovative element this time is our focus on digital technology with an opportunity to reflect on the changes that we've seen in the past 12 months as a result of the COVID crisis. And this fantastic Expo virtual reality platform is an example of this in action. For me, it's certainly a digital first, I think for many. You could say, reflecting on this, that the form is the message. And I'll be interested to hear your feedback and reactions on this uh, VR experience. The platform provides us with interactive op opportunities to discuss new tech and how it impacts on our own world of language, learning, teaching, and assessment. I've got to keep this thing going. Echo. So um, in setting the scene, for the talk and, and for the uh, conference as a whole, I'll be posing questions rather than offering the answers, I think. Here are two overarching ones to begin with. How does the digital uh, technology affect our constructs, tasks, and delivery systems? And what does it mean for our core educational and societal values, as on the screen here? Um, diversity, equity and inclusion, and themes familiar to us such as fairness, social justice, data and ethics, migration and marginalization. I'll, I hope I'll be highly highlighting the opportunities that the technology can bring in order to do things differently with clear benefits in terms of enhancements, and perhaps even with some transformative improvements for the future. There are, of course, accompanying challenges and risks, which I'll, I'll highlight and exemplify. How can we therefore embrace the changes and address the risks? Are there 
now practical ways in which we can work together in our communities of practice to make real progress. So the title of this talk is not just different, but better. In education, of course, the first impact of the COVID-19 crisis was the abrupt shift to remote or at home learning supported by our existing digital platforms and tools. And we soon became familiar with the idea of this as the new normal. But what, what does that really mean and how persistent will these changes be? What will become the next normal further down the line? And how can we safeguard the principles and practices that we value and we wish to preserve? In the case, in our case, that's in language assessment and, uh, and learning that's related to that. Will we need to develop new principles and or adapt our existing guidelines to incorporate the next normal into our routine practices? And later today, we have a session on our principles of good practice, and this might come up, I hope. Hmm. A little slow. Okay. In education, broadly speaking, the numbers shown here on the slide speak for themselves. Within weeks, literally, COVID had closed our schools and shifted teaching and learning to the home with, of course, major challenges for all educational systems and not least for the providers of educational assessments such as us in Alte. New words and phrases with related concepts rapidly became familiar to us all, such as remote assessment with remote proctoring. And just as rapidly, unfortunately, the disparities in digital learning emerged, as noted by UNESCO, um, as early as April last year in their news story. But this dis disruption of the old normal has indeed persisted so far throughout the pandemic. A more recent UNESCO bulletin by Stefania Giannini here shows this, that's from April, so sorry, January this year. So there's a sort of um, acceptance that things are being changed by the dis disruption and that there are therefore issues we have to come to terms with. And, and with that in mind, before going on, I'd like to draw your attention to this recent publication shown here on the right of the screen. And I'll be returning to this at the end of this talk. This is by the Institute for Ethical AI and Education in the UK, which published its final report on work conducted over a couple of years, just last month in, in March. As you see from the, um, from the screen, there is an extract from the report, which highlights the uh, digital uh, exclusion reality, which I've just talked about. And if you look carefully at, the, at this, I'm trying to read it uh, now. It says, um, those learners who lacked adequate access to devices and internet connections suffered most. The critical loss of learning from many, uh, many of the most disadvantaged young people could and should have been avoided. But the key point I'd like to highlight most is in red. The same mistakes will be less likely to be repeated if the work of the Institute is he did. Now that's a big claim. I'd like you to hold that in mind and we'll see and we'll think about that and come back to it later. So we're now, I think, contributing to what I'm calling a global conversation taking place in many contexts uh, around the world and, and in many uh, environments, including in our own academic conferences in the field and in our own academic journals, such as a recent edition of LAQ. We touched on some of these issues in the last Zoom version of Alte held last November, and I recently attended uh, a symposium at AAAL led by Meg Malone in March this year, entitled 
promoting equity and flexibility. And that's worth checking out if you if you have access to it, as there are some similarities with our um, work in Alte. Um, as I've highlighted, uh, the main issue I think that's emerged is the digital divide, but related to this are also the new uses of educational tech uh, and the growing awareness of artificial intelligence or AI and how to access the benefits of that without creating new problems and characterized here is the algorithm versus the humans. Uh, and uh, I think um, worries and rumors have begun to circulate. And that was obvious last year during the um, European examination season in May and June, uh, particularly in the UK, where we saw uh, questions about algorithms taking over. Alte itself conducted a survey last summer to gauge the effect of this change. And recently, I asked the secretari secretariat to run for me a, a straw poll to gauge the current views of members uh, and what they're feeling about what's going, going on. In, in running the, this poll, I was particularly interested in what has changed so far and whether those changes are likely to be persistent. And if so, will they be for the better? And what issues arise if they do? Just to illustrate that from you know what we've all been going through, I put two examples from daily life up here, which changed rapidly. Uh, working from home, many of us are still doing that. I'm talking from my home today. And more cycling and walking to work or elsewhere. Are they persistent and will they, will they be beneficial? Well, obviously, you can reflect on cycling. It, it's generally considered to be more healthy and ecological, perhaps cheaper. But it raises lifestyle issues and also raises issues to do with safety, which, is, which society at large would have to come to terms with if we're going to benefit from this. So in this vein, in running the, the straw poll, I was thinking about the same, th the same ideas applied to uh, language learning and assessment. And um, some, some patterns were beginning to emerge from that, but not any clear, um, if you like, patterns which, which are conclusive. I picked up one here between children learning from home versus adults learning from home. And generally speaking, people were feeling that adults learning from home supported by technology was likely to remain and likely to be a good thing. Whereas for children, the jury's out. Other rumors which I'm picking up are the sort here, you hear um, people saying, well, technology is now isolating learners. They're, they're, they're not having any community with their, with their peers. That's affecting first language development. Learning is changing, uh, but for the worse, not for the better. And teaching practices are going to be replaced by AI. A sort of scaremongering idea here. Well, as I say, no consensus yet in this. And obviously more research will be needed. Um, I think uh, there are mixed views. But one thing I would say which has emerged or is emerging is the idea of hybrid systems. And, and that is uh, whether it's um, in your, where you organize your life, your work, our confidences and our learning systems um, as we are now, there seems to be an emerging acceptance that hybridity or combined in person with virtual will persist and can in fact bring real benefits if we get the balance right. So not just different, as this famous photo and quotation illustrates, many of you will see, have seen it before, what will help ensure that change is for the better? So not just different, but better. In reflecting on this question, colleagues and I in Cambridge have for some time been using this diagram to consider the issues. It's sometimes called uh, the SAMA diagram. You have to read it from the bottom to the top. 
So as, the, as things change, you go from enhancement to augmentation to modification to trans, well, redefinition, which is transformative. So from enhancement to transformation. For me, the question is how the ed tech can enable us to create new assessment systems that were previously inconceivable or impractical and not possible in the past at any time or any place beyond the traditional classroom with new kinds of authenticity of tasks being introduced by zoom based approaches to conversation and interactive communication but the challenge of redefinition is a little bit further out i suggest and it will need us to harness the use of best, best practice in educational technology with educational artificial intelligence to enable us to, de to develop new constructs and new delivery modes. So will we eventually be able to develop practical plurilingual assessments and support plurilingual practices more effectively, which, which um, gets over some of the current problems that we experience with our current technology and our current ways of doing things. So not just different, but better. I think we're now in a transition period with hybrid systems and solutions helping us to enhance and modify what we do. So how can we take advantage of this opportunity in the first instance and then move ahead with new constructs and new tasks which, which uh, we couldn't uh, deal with in the past. While of course I would um, say remembering the daily realities of most language learners and how can we empower these children more effectively uh, and take into account their context so it's not just the high-tech, high, highly supported middle classes we've got in our mind here. Um, but um, in empowering learners more effectively and make pro progress, we can think in and beyond the traditional classroom and begin to deliver benefits that we know are central to language learning, such as localization, individualization, and more personalized pathways. And in that, we can bring to bear technology which enables um, adaptive learning with automated feedback and begin to use the advantages of automated assessment to support learning more effectively. With this in mind, we can begin to extend what we currently do to create more effective ecosystems of learning. So building on the new normal to enhance and modify our tasks. And we begin to see this, as I've said already, with the world of authentic, collaborative, interactive speaking that we, we are doing today and we, we, we do every day now with, with uh, internet-based um, communication such as Zoom. And we see this already coming into uh, language assessment. Going beyond that, though, and we could begin to think about more, more advanced technologies, such as the virtual reality simulations and experiences that we're involved in today, to address some of the intractable questions of language assessment to do with authenticity, which was highlighted 30 plus years ago as, as the uh, goal in the final part of Lyle Backman's book on fundamental considerations. So to, to bring together the uh, assessment context and the real world context more authentically. And perhaps that's where VR will offer us some opportunities. And not to, not to forget that the generation X or generation alpha of children now coming into education will expect to be using these devices in their daily life. And how can we, in, uh, as it were, harness that potential to engage learners, motivate learners, and create more effective learning environments? This will 
perhaps enable us to move away from a main focus on large scale assessment only, often with um, high stakes and negative washback effects, which are regularly documented, to a more integrated learning oriented approach to assessment that seeks to bring together and integrate learning and assessment of all kinds more effectively in what I call by design, um, with learning and assessment going hand in hand. So in summary, um, on this, uh, in this slide, we are seeing with the technology and our new focus uh, on, on opportunities emerging, ways to empower learners to get to evidence better learning, creating better motivation, more time on task, greater authenticity. And we're doing this by using devices to extend learning uh, to make connections between the home and the school, the school and the community, and then throughout life from school to university and then the workplace in a lifelong learning model. So you see here at the idea of the human and the machine going hand in hand in some way. So not just different, but better. But with that comes challenges on using the AI. Um, and the benefits have to be evaluated against the risks. And what are they? And how can they be mitigated? Well, some of them are shown on the screen here, and they are already quite familiar to us in language assessment circles, perhaps less so in other edu educational contexts. But um you know the these are familiar to us already but ai brings with it new concerns so artificial intelligence in language education ai ed or ed ai uh, what do we mean by this and what should we understand by it well for me it's the application of ai for learning the assessment of learning and for the f facilitation of our core educational goals. And we need to keep top of mind what those goals are so we don't lose sight of that when it comes to applying the technology. And it also requires ourselves and other educationists to get a better grasp of what the AI offers us. Most of the time, for example, we are actually talking about machine learning, a subset of AI. And the challenges and risks, uh, at least in the first instance, are largely focused on the data piece, the collection and use of data. But also, we have to go beyond that, is to do with the purposes and uses of the AI systems and making sure that that handshake of the human and the machine is in a virtuous combination, if you like, with the human and society in the loop, as they say, and in charge, so that the um, the outcomes are being driven by the human uh, for the learning and learning-centered goals that we have in mind. And we need to make sure that we are ethically ready for the oversight, and if necessary, the regulation of these emerging systems. Uh, I would argue, uh, as I've already mentioned, that we do need to enhance our own code of practice. And this is something we can talk about um, in this conference in our own multilingual world of learning, teaching and assessment, such as the, the work of Alte. Beyond that, we also need to upskill language professionals and practitioners so that they engage actively in this process, so that they can take advantage of the benefits while also being aware of the need to apply um, professional and ethical standards that, that keep the educational goals in mind. And that brings me back to the Institute of Ethical AI in Education and, and to draw your attention to this piece of work, which I think can be very instrumental in helping us think this through. The box on the right, is an extract from the interim report from the 2020 document that set out a blueprint for a framework for considering the issues. And you can see some of the key points there. I hope you can read them. 
which which helped to structure this framework. The, the, the report itself, which I highlighted before, was published last month. And both of these are now freely available as PDF. So um, please take a look at them. The framework itself is a short and concise document, and it's designed to be helpful for engaging with the issues. Um, it's set out around these nine objectives, which you can read and see on the screen there. On the right of the screen, you see how it's organized in a form of checklist. And for each of the nine objectives, there are a set of questions and, and comments about them. And I think we can take this and reflect on it in our own domain with some, with some very specific domain related issues which arise as we begin to address, address these questions. And this takes me back to the claim that um, mistakes being made in the shift, COVID shift, would be less likely if the institute is heeded. So the top of the screen is what I had highlighted in red earlier on. So the key point for me and for this conference is to see us at the watershed moment brought on by the crisis. So it says here, in the long term, the pandemic may prove to be a watershed moment for education. By utilizing AI ethically and with purpose, societies can look forward to addressing previously overwhelming educational inequalities and enabling all learners from all backgrounds to achieve their full potential. But this comes with a caveat, and the caveat is highlighted again in red here at the bottom of the screen. It says here, achieve their full potential as long as there is universal and equal access to the necessary hardware, infrastructure, and connectivity. So a call to arms, if you like, we will all need to work together to address the current disparity and find better ways to provide this greater access, the access that is needed to these technologies, um, these infrastructures, uh, to, to unlock the potential benefits. I believe we can use this watershed moment to address our own long-standing concerns related to multilingualism, especially opening up new ways to foster a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I hope this virtual event today and in the next two days will give us plenty of opportunity to listen uh, and to share ideas that are relevant to the questions I've raised. And perhaps as a result, to consider and discuss innovative ways in which we can, in practical, in practical and, and practicable ways, move forward together towards some solutions. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this symposium and, and what we've got on offer in the next two days. And I look forward to engaging with you and to getting your feedback in due course. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Nick, for that introduction. Uh, I think that's definitely given us food for thought, and it really does shape the whole of our time together. Um, I put the uh, link to the report that Nick mentioned in the chat, so hopefully you can access that if you're interested. Uh, we don't have time for any Q&A at the moment, but please do go and find Nick and talk to him at some point in the duration of this symposium if you'd like to. So uh, we move on with our programme and this is the chance for you to move about and to choose which session you'd like to go to now. In five minutes time at uh, a quarter to the hour, uh, there will be two different workshops that happen one in room one and one in room two, you need to teleport your way to that. Find the teleporting stations, which will take you to uh, either room one or room two. In room one, 
uh, Amy Devine and Tom Booth will lead a workshop, What's the Point of Assessment? Making it Fit for Humans, uh, all about uh, game-based assessment, gamification. And in room two, Vincent Folny will uh, lead a workshop from watching to reaction and finally to action, a brief history of remote proctoring. Both of these are workshops, they're both interactive and engaging, so please make sure that you are ready to turn on your microphone and uh, share your thoughts as well. So please make your way now out of this main stage and go and teleport yourself to either room one or room two and I'll see you around. Thanks very much.